Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh, topping our newscast. The Zika global emergency is taking hold of entire countries. In the United States, a different mode of transmission was confirmed on Tuesday. Zika has been found to be sexually transmittable. Cruise lines are responding to the crisis by giving their clients some leeway when it comes to travel changes. News News April Night has more. In the midst of the Zika scare, cruise lines are following suit after airlines assisting travelers who might want to take a rain check on travel to Zika-infected regions. Various cruise companies are giving guests, especially pregnant women, different forms of accommodations, from fee waivers to alternate itineraries to future cruise credits, should they need to delay or cancel trips. The response came after the CDC issued an advisory warning pregnant women against travel to certain Latin American and Caribbean countries. The list includes the Virgin Islands. Concern over the virus rose even higher on Tuesday when the U.S. confirmed a lone case of sexual Zika transmission. An individual who had sexual contact with a recent traveler became infected as well. According to VI officials, the single reported sexually transmitted Zika infection in the mainland does not really affect the local strategy to combat the spread of the virus. Health officials say they'll continue with the action plan they put in place, mainly focusing on mosquito net distribution, the deployment of larvicides, and a vigorous public awareness campaign. It expands our messaging, and that is that you know, we at the Department of Health always want to promote safe sex, especially for, for people who may be affected by the Zika virus. We definitely want to promote safe sex. Authorities say it's too soon to tell when the threat of Zika will ebb in the territory. They say there's much about the illness that remains a mystery. Zika virus is still very new on the world stage, mm -hmm. and so there's, there's a lot for everyone to learn. This is a learning process, and for us, especially here in the territory, it's a matter of preparedness. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Local officials continue to advocate the use of mosquito repellents as well, especially those contained in DEET. You are urged to visit your pharmacies or hardware stores, which should have them in stock. Meanwhile, nationally, it's all hands on deck at the Centers for Disease Control. They've set up a central response area at their headquarters in Atlanta to further study and contain the virus in the mainland. The drug company Sanofi Pasteur is also attempting to manufacture a vaccine against Zika. But they caution that three years might be optimistic to accomplish that. In Latin America, health ministers from various Latin American countries are meeting in Montevideo, Uruguay, to discuss a concerted response to the global threat. In other news, the United States domestic production of oil has nearly doubled over the last several years. Oil that was previously imported to the U.S. by other countries such as Saudi Arabia, Nigeria and Algeria are now competing for Asian markets. These oil producers have been forced to drop prices because the market is oversaturated. What does this mean for the territory? News 2 reporter Stephanie Brown has more. Globally, the price of oil has been dropping dramatically. The American reference price for buyers and sellers of crude oil is currently around $32 a barrel, which is significantly less than the $90 benchmark crude oil ran for in the past. However, the Virgin Islands is still feeling the pinch of higher prices on gas, essential needs, and foods. The Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs have reported that they have intensified their efforts to monitor prices being used and charged to consumers. According to a press release issued by the DLCA, the department stated that in the past, retailers have justified high prices as being due to the cost of oil, transportation, and the cost of electricity. So what we do is we have surveys once a month for food and weekly for gas. And when we conduct the research that we do, we have the data, we compile it, and we're able to then do studies on what we have to compare to state that The DLCA is urging consumers to shop smart and to use legal means of publicity to report instances of excessive price goods. Because as you know, we have a lot of unique circumstances in the Virgin Islands, so we don't want to make it tough to do business. 
but we do want to make it easier for folks to have their rights appreciated and defended. Pictures as well as reports are accepted at the Department of License and Consumers offices. Stephanie Brown, News 2. The Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs is collaborating with members of the legislature to strengthen laws to prevent and penalize excessive pricing. The LCA has expressed that they can enforce statutory provisions that allow them to set reasonable profit margins. Turn attention to crime reports on Tuesday, February 2nd at 7.39 p.m. The 911 emergency call center received a report of gunfire discharged in the vicinity of the H&R grocery store located on Queen Street in Frederickstead. Moments later, at 7.42 p.m., a second call was made to the call center stating that an individual had been shot. Officers were informed that the victim had been transported to the Juan Louis Hospital by private vehicle. Officers were unable to speak with the victim who was unconscious and being tended to. The victim had sustained a gunshot wound and subsequently succumbed to his injuries. He was later identified as Wang Encarnacion, 30 of a state white lady. Call police if you can help. Any numbers there on the screen, including Crime Stoppers USVI at 1 800 222 TIPS. Nidra Dobbs, owner of an aesthetic medicine office based in Atlanta, was indicted on murder charges on January 31, 2016 by a grand jury in Kennesaw, Georgia. Dobbs once resided in the territory, you may remember, for a short time and was employed as a consultant at the Juan Louis Hospital on St. Croix while she was still being investigated for two deaths that occurred at her business while providing a buttocks reduction and fat transfer cosmetic procedure. Following investigative reports by a CBS news station, police began to look further into the credentials of Nedra Dobbs. The CBS reporter, as well as the local Georgia police, found that Dobbs lied about her medical affiliations and certifications. Count on two, we will keep you updated. Dozens are dead in northeast Nigeria after another terror attack by Boko Haram. Locals say gunmen came into the town and opened fire before burning down homes. Reports say people were even burned. The village is near the largest refugee camp in the country for those displaced by the terror group. It houses about 20,000 people and adds more with every decimated village. In other news with Iowa in the rearview mirror, the presidential candidates are in New Hampshire ahead of Tuesday's primary there. Andrew Spencer has the details. Fresh off his victory in Iowa, Ted Cruz is embracing his momentum. Conservatives all across the state of Iowa came out and stood together and they put the country on notice that the media is not going to pick the next Republican nominee. A dig aimed at Donald Trump, who accused Cruz via Twitter of fraud and stealing the Iowa caucuses. Trump wants either a new election or to have the results nullified. Meanwhile, the GOP field of candidates continues to narrow. Rand Paul announced he was pulling out of the race today after a fifth place showing in Iowa. It has been a privilege to give voice to the liberty movement in this race, and I believe we have broadened the debate by being part of it. Two Republican sources tell CNN Rick Santorum will also end his campaign Wednesday night. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will be grilled by New Hampshire voters in tonight's CNN town hall meeting in Derry. They'll also face off tomorrow night in a traditional debate, which almost didn't happen. Sanders threatened to pull out unless the Clinton camp agreed to three more debates. Clinton agreed to two in Michigan and California, but not in her home state of New York. I am a little bit uh, amazed that Secretary Clinton does not want to have a debate in the state that she represented. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. And keeping our eye on the economy, here's a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. Taking a look at the numbers there. As we can see, the Dow up 183, NASDAQ down 12, the S&P 500 up at 9. Coming up on News 2, the struggles of Sugar Bay Resort on St. Thomas seem to continue. We'll have the latest on what's happening over there right after this. Welcome back. Through the efforts of one lawmaker, it's been revealed that Sugar Bay Resort and Spa has indeed missed a paycheck for its employees 
but the hotel says it will make good on its obligations. According to Senator Gene Ford, the hotel also denied that it's delinquent in its obligations to the government when it comes to its employees' unemployment benefits. News News April Night has more. The struggles of Sugar Bay Resort on St. Thomas seem to continue. Recent reports of at least one pay less payday for its employees was confirmed by Senator Gene Ford, chairman of the Senate Committee on Workforce Development. Got the impression that all of the employees okay. faced the same predicament. Okay. He um, quickly said, however, though, that they, they made provisions for individuals who had urgencies, critical matters, they needed to buy medication and so right. forth, that they were able to make an appeal and they will give them, you know, an allowance, if you will. It's a situation that Sugar Bay management promised to rectify by the end of the week. This was not the first bit of bad news received by Sugar Bay employees for the year. In January, some of them were left scrambling for jobs after being abruptly handed pink slips. A news to source who preferred to remain unidentified said that when they went to the Department of Labor, they were told that there was some dispute about the company's payments to the department for their unemployment benefits. Meanwhile, Sugar Bay management gave assurance to the contrary. He assured me that all of the, the, the obligations towards the government as it relates to unemployment um, has been is updated. I do have my staff walking as we speak right now to verify down to the Department of Labor that that is in fact is the case. In addition, AM Resorts, which manages the Dreams brand, officially ended its contract on December 31st, 2015. Dreams backing out has caused concerns among clients, especially when they tried to Google the hotel and it said permanently closed. Ford's inquiry shed some light on that confusion. What was shared with me apparently was uh, when dreams uh, pulled out or, or chose to disassociate themselves from the Sugar Bay Resort, what they did is they called all of the customers that booked under them. For News 2, I'm April Knight. Count on two, we will keep you updated on any developments in this story. Senator Gene Ford, Chairman on Education and Workforce Development, expressed that he will be continuing his efforts to address the pending crisis of the territory's school lunch program. Ford announced that he has been in discussion with local and federal officials to develop a plan to address the situation. Ford has stated that the legislature has provided the level of funding that was originally requested and that any reduction in local school lunch expenditures was a result of administrative and not legislative decisions. Meanwhile, Ford continued his labor outreach initiative on Friday, January 29th, as members of his staff, along with Fernando Webster, representative from the Department of Labor, visited Tutu, High Rise, Hidden Valley, Nada, Thomasville, and the Bovoni Housing Communities. This initiative was first conceptualized by Senator Ford, who said he's determined to assist the unemployed find jobs. He said many individuals are not visiting the Department of Labor to take advantage of the job opportunities being offered. They perhaps find the process in intimidating. And as chairperson of the Education and Workforce Development, Ford has forged a partnership with the Department of Labor in order to bring the necessary information to residents of these neighborhoods. Innovative announces that applications for the 2016 Albert A. Sheen scholarships are available at various locations throughout the territory. The scholarships are awarded to two Virgin Islands high school seniors who have already been accepted to a college or university to pursue a degree in one of the following disciplines, accounting, business administration, business management, engineering, or related fields. The scholarship is named in honor of the late attorney Albert A. Sheen. Each student is awarded a one-time $10,000 scholarship to be used for tuition only. Applications are available at the security desk, at the Innovative Business Offices, online, Innovative, and guidance counselors at all Virgin Islands high schools. All completed applications are due in one of the Innovative Offices or postmarked by Friday, May 6, 2016. Innovative Telephone will also be donating $20,000 to four students to per district to receive a $5,000 scholarship to the University of the Virgin Islands. 
Well, speaking of UVI, this Valentine's Day, UVI's National Student Exchange and HIV AIDS Prevention Programs, they're adding a special touch by giving back to the community. Students, faculty and staff have an opportunity to participate in a community service activity through the Love Pack Toiletry Drive. The Love Packs will be given to the homeless community, they say on February 12th to the 13th. The following travel size toiletries on the screen right there are needed for the packs. Items can be dropped off by Wednesday, February 10th at the UVI Cafe, UVI Library, Health Services Building, and Counseling and Career Services. The numbers you can call, call Dahlia Stradiron at 340-693-1136 or Alyssa Ryan at 340-693-1122 for additional information. Well, as part of its 35-year uh, anniversary celebration, Banco Popular held a press conference on Tuesday to present the various initiatives that will take place throughout the year, as well as its new advertising campaign that features the slogan, Let's Make More Possible. Banco Popular also unveiled an exhibitor, and the exhibitor is located at the bank's regional headquarters in the Valentino McBean Regional Banking Center in Chalada Mali. It presents a timeline of the milestones through the years. The official dates for this year's Ultimate Flavors of the Islands was also announced. The annual event will take place on Thursday, May 19th and Friday, May 20th. Be sure to stick around. Your News to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.